The property market is crashing. I'm sure you've heard that headline far too many times over the last two months. So let's get to the bottom line. Is the property market going to crash and how is that going to affect you and your investments? We're gonna break down reasons why the market won't crash here in Australia. And even if there are price declines of five to 10%, how you can ride out the storm and see value in the long term. My name's Luke. I talk all things real estate, renovating and financial freedom on the channel. Drop a like on this video, subscribe down below and let's dive into today's topic. I've seen headlines saying property prices are going to fall somewhere between 10 to 20% over the next 12 months. But I don't think that's really realistic. I think some of the major markets like Sydney and Melbourne are going to have a pullback in prices. But if you've seen 10, 15, 20% growth over the last few years, a five or 10% pullback isn't putting you in that bad of a position. But what factors are going to affect property prices moving forward? Australians are wealthier than ever before. With the government printing massive amounts of money through the pandemic period, Australia's net wealth has increased across the board. The people that are really going to be affected in these price declines are people who bought at the peak and over leveraged themselves without understanding the risks. People who were stretched on a two to 3% interest rate are going to continue to struggle as rates rise. But for the bulk of Australians, they'll have a large amount of net worth growing from the last few years and a decline of five to 10% in their property values isn't really going to change their situation. The thing is you don't have to sell we're moving into spring selling season and there's talk that this could be the worst spring that uh, Australian property has had in a number of years. But in terms of the supply equation of property, sellers at this point aren't required to sell. A lot of people who are listing their property for auction or listing their property for private treaty can simply pull their property off the market if they don't get a price they are happy with. This is very different to price pullbacks we've seen in the last few decades where there were more distressed sales, where people had to put their property on the market and sell because they were in mortgage distress. But given we're still in a low interest rate environment and the cash rate is only 1.8 5% and could go up to say two and a half, three percent 3%, which would mean your everyday mortgage is roughly five to 6% for the average Aussie. That's a reasonable level of interest rate for most Aussies to make their investments and buy their own home. We're not moving into significant interest rate environments. We're just coming off a significantly low base towards a cash rate of only 0.1%. Other factors supporting the property market are banks are conservative with their loan assessments. When the banks do their serviceability tests, they were originally doing them on a 2.5% buffer. And in the last few years, that was pushed to a 3% buffer to stress test your repayments, typically on principal and interest. What this means is if you originally took your mortgage out on a 3% interest rate, the bank stress tests you at a 6% interest rate, meaning that you could make the repayments, principal and interest at a 6% rate. This buffer creates a lot of headroom and means Aussies have the capacity and capability to make their repayments. It also significantly reduces the likelihood of those distressed sales taking place. Another reason the Aussie property market isn't going to crash is we're in a major shortage of housing supply. You've probably heard about the ghost properties where interstate or overseas investors are buying properties and keeping them vacant. We've got a lot of transition in homes, but at the end of the day, we don't have enough supply on the market to meet the rental demand. Given the cost of building supply and materials and lack of skilled labor, we're going to continue to struggle to actually meet this supply shortage. That's why the government has so many first home grants. They're looking to incentivize development, which pumps money into the economy, which moves from job to job. As you can imagine, the construction of a house employs a lot of people. So the government will want to stimulate housing construction, but the supply of housing is being continually soaked up by the demand in Australia's market. Another reason supporting Australia's economy and housing market is overseas migration. Now we've seen a lot of interstate migration for people moving from Sydney Melbourne, uh, Canberra, all the way up to Southeast Queensland. And we've had a lot of interstate migration supporting the Southeast Queensland market, both from an owner occupier view and investors moving their funds up here as well. But over the next few years, the Australian government is going to allow overseas migration to pick up. And that's only going to put more demand in the supply and demand equation for Australia's housing. The last couple factors on my list are the unemployment rates here in Australia are at historic lows. This means that people who want a job are currently in a job 
And we're seeing a lot more double income households than we used to in the decades gone by, where couples are seeing double incomes, no kids, and that's boosting serviceability and allowing people to spend more on their property, more on their investments, and more on their lifestyle. This is pushing up prices in in-demand areas and is going to keep demand strong for property because people are in jobs, which will allow them to service the debt, which will allow them to buy their own home and investment properties. Also, in terms of the cash flow of holding an investment property, we're seeing massive rental demand at the moment. Especially here on the ground in Brisbane in my buyer's agency, we're noticing properties getting snapped up when they're put on the rental market. And this is the case Australia-wide with significantly low vacancy rates across suburbs, typically below one to 2%, which is a chronic shortage of rental supply. When you overlay all these factors, Australia's wealth, record low interest rates, interstate and overseas migration, uh, employment, and a rental crisis here in Australia, a small pullback in property prices which are coming off highs is not to be unexpected. But I'm making a statement here that I don't think we're going to see a property market crash. Australia's fundamentals look fantastic. Even though Sydney and Melbourne are seeing those price declines, they're relatively unaffordable compared to the other states and major regional locations. For me, I'll be looking elsewhere at this point in time outside Sydney, Melbourne and Canberra. Those would be the locations I would be avoiding. I'd look at the other major capital cities, the other major and regional locations based on these factors, based on the jobs in those locations, based on the rental demand, based on the overseas and interstate migration, weighing up the supply and demand in these situations. We're not going to see a property market crash in my opinion. And the other thing to keep in mind is that these short-term fluctuations don't really affect you as an investor. It's only on paper on the balance sheet. When you buy a property, you pay a certain price. And the revaluation only occurs when you go back to the bank and ask for a full valuation on the property. Fluctuations in the market where you speculate your Sydney property's gone from $1.5 to $1.4 million doesn't affect you in your day-to-day -day life. As long as you're managing your investment property cash flows and you understand your gearing, your operating expenses, and all of your income, then these fluctuations in valuations and speculation around property prices aren't going to affect you. The facts are you pay a certain price when you buy a property, you can get formal bank valuations over time to increase your debt, but my rule of thumb is rarely ever sell unless it meets your situation. You should be looking to hold property for the long term and ride out these short-term fluctuations up and down in terms of property prices, because in my opinion, property has a great trajectory in terms of slow and long-term wealth creation. I get asked every day of the week, is now the right time to buy property? And that is a quite a broad question, but for me, it comes down to two factors. Does this align with my strategy and do I have the financial capacity to move forward? So understand your strategy, understand your finances, and if both of those are aligned, take the next steps to find a deal. You're not buying a major capital city like Sydney or Melbourne. You're not even buying a region. You're buying a specific lot in a specific street in a specific suburb, and there are deals to be had everywhere. So make sure you keep in mind the long-term focus of your property investment goals, reassess your situation, minimize the expenses, maximize your rental income, and move forward and write out these fluctuations in the property market. One of the things I love about property, I was chatting with a few friends about this, is that property for me, you don't get it revalued every day. There can be speculation around prices, but it's not like the stock market. The stock market, you you know, you can pull out your phone 5 a.m. every morning and check whether it's gone up or down in terms of the last few days. Whereas property, it's much harder to put a pinpoint on a valuation unless you sell that property. And what this means is if you have the ability to hold your property, you don't need to speculate too much on the value of it, and you don't have to worry so much about market sentiment and stick to your long-term strategy. If you're looking for a Brisbane-based buyer's agent to help you buy in the Southeast Queensland market, head over to purposeproperty.com.au where you can book in a free strategy session with myself. Otherwise, drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel down below, and click this video over here for more things real estate state, renovating and financial freedom. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Oh.